Hey guys, Rod from Flightscope. Um, we've been motivated to do a little short video. A real bit of a how-to on um, uh, maintenance releases and maintenance forms for RAOs and GA aircraft that we operate. Just a bit more uh, to elaborate on what your flying instructor will tell you on a day-to-day -day basis. So we'll work backwards. We'll start with um, our Schedule 5 of maintenance and our CAP 4301, our Civil Aviation Advisory CAP. Uh, and just have a look at what we need to do and then we'll have a look at the maintenance release and the maintenance form themselves. I think an important thing to remember when we start the day's flying, it's not a pre-flight, it's a daily inspection. Uh, there are certain things that must be done. Um, some of the basic ones that you wouldn't normally do on a pre-flight are things like um, doing a fuel drain for the first flight of the day and after each refueling. Most of us know those. Uh, other things like checking the switches are off, burping the engine on the Eurofox, doing whatever's required for the first flight of the day as per the airplane's pilot's operating handbook slash flight manual. Most of us are getting that fairly right, so that's good news. Like I said, if we want to have any more elaboration of what we need to do, uh, we can refer to the POH or the aircraft flight manual. However, most of us are having trouble with uh, the paperwork side of it and what this legal document here is the maintenance release for both our GA and our RAOs aeroplanes. Let's start with the differences I guess between what a maintenance release is for a GA um, Schedule 5 category of maintenance aeroplane and for our RAOs maintenance form aeroplane. They actually call it something a little different. They're very very similar and we treat them as very 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 similar there are a few little things different. One that stands out is that the maintenance form for an RAOs aeroplane, for our RAOs Eurofoxes for instance, are 100 hours between services. There are other things that come up earlier. Uh, things might be uh, the Rotax 50 hourly service for oil and uh, the oil filter. Uh, whereas quite often with the CASA style aeroplane, Schedule 5 for instance, we can actually overrun the 100 hours by 10% uh, to 110 hours sometimes. Uh, not in all cases, which then means we can't rob from Peter to pay Paul, so the next 100 hourly would be a 90 hourly, uh, uh, so you still do your two 100 hours per 200 hour, your two 100 hourly services per 200 hours. We actually don't use the um, uh, Recreational Aviation Australia maintenance form, which is available on the RAOs website, and you can print them off. Um, we prefer to use the CASA style form. Uh, we've got the ProAv one here, it's a multi, uh, multi-segmented form, um, much like uh, the CASA one uh, that we're using for the GA aeroplanes. Big thing we're seeing is people are signing the maintenance form and in reality we call both the uh, REOs and the GA MR maintenance forms, we call them the same thing, we just call them a maintenance release for all intensive purposes. The big thing we're seeing is people not signing them for the first day of flying, uh, first flight of the day, sorry, not uh, realising that there's something due um, in the, um, uh, the the maintenance required section of the form, which might have said on a G on our RALs aeroplane that the ELT battery line number three is due on a certain date. So people are not actually getting in and starting from the top of the maintenance lease from from page zero, I guess, and finding out. So let's. Ignore the CASA one for a second, and let's go straight to the RAOs one that we use. Uh, so we'll start off with our um, RAOs style um, maintenance form um, we use. Uh, again, it's just a generic, um, this one's from the CA in New Zealand actually, it's a generic maintenance release form um, for our Eurofox and our RAOs fleet. So this one, it's a Eurofox uh, 3K. It was 55 is the number of maintenance releases that have been issued off that pad I've got. Uh, 24 has been changed from VH obviously, so 24-5350 is the rego. So I've got the right aeroplane for us, we're off to a good start. It was issued by Flight Sky Aviation Provitra Limited at Boyland or Archerfield or wherever it was, uh, the maintenance was done at and the, and the, and the uh, maintenance release was issued. At 1,676 hours, the date it was issued and the time. Not super important because we can go to midnight on the, uh, the, the 365 days later. I uh, made a little error here, but anyway, it's um, uh, 100 hours on from our 1676 is going to be 1776. 
So one of these is going to come first, either the hours or the date. Most private aeroplanes, the date will expire first and you'll get to your 39 hours or whatever, and you, but, you've, but your year's up. So it's an annual slash 100, whichever comes first, 100 hourly. Uh, signed by the uh, engineer, their number, uh, day VFR flying obviously for RA Oz is the operational category. And the schedules of, um, or the schedules of the system of maintenance in our particular Eurofox are the AeroPro, which is the, uh, the uh, manufacturer of the aircraft, is their, their maintenance manual, and obviously the Rotax maintenance manual for the engine. We change the oil a bit more regularly than what uh, Rotax say 50 hours uh, oil and filter. We do it at 33 hours. So, the, excuse the writing, but um, 33 hours on the year 1676, and then another 33 hours again. Uh, this one also has some mates required, which is line three, which says the ELT battery uh, is, expires actually this month on the, uh, the end of May, the end of May um, 2020. We have a nose landing gear fork bearing loose next hundred. So on our um, Euro Foxes, they have a couple of bushes on the top of the, uh, the, the steering fork and they're, they're, a bronze, they're a bronze bush and there's a little bit of wear in them, so it needs to, they'll have to be replaced in the next 100. So we have some maintenance that's coming up um, due, and it'll be cleared uh, possibly within the next this 100, but possibly in the next 100 early. We try and number the pages. So we have page one, page two, three, and four. Someone's obviously started here, so here's a bit of an error I've prepared earlier. So someone's started on the last page to start adding in hours and whatnot. So. So this page has been filled up. Um, it started on the 31st of the 3rd, 20. The pilot has signed it for the day's flying with his license. Uh, this one here is a uh, uh, license number slash um, RAOS membership number. Um, they did start writing its numbers here, but because our flight hour meter is the same as our aircraft total time and service and it hasn't been replaced yet, so we haven't had a new flight meter, we don't need this first column. The um, Aeroplane did its days flying. It ended up, the flight hour meter ended up at uh, 677.7. So a little calculation's been done. I think he's repaired it here. He's he put it across here, so he's even signed his initial there. Richard, uh, Richard's put his initials there. It's done 1.7 for the day. The landings have been added up. So it started off at the beginning of the maintenance release, uh, or the maintenance form in this case, at 37.93, and it's done two landings for the day. So it's done it's now 37.95 total landings. Next column, which we must, uh, which we're obliged by law to, uh, to log the uh, amount of landings the aircraft does per day. Um, not only for engineering and maintenance, but for also the Bureau of Statistics. The final column is, column is oil. So uh, our little Eurofoxes don't burn much oil, little Rotax engines. So it looks like here it might've had uh, 100 mil of oil put in. And uh, some days later it's had 150 mil of oil put in. So that also gives us a quite a good idea about how good the engine is. This engine's um, approaching the end of its life. It's an original engine from new, and it's got about 17, well, if we go right over the next, we can tell you exactly. It's got uh, 1,741 hours um, on the engine. So only, that's three quarters of the way. It's only got about 250 hours left of its life. That's a maintenance form for RAOs. CASA form, CASA style form, good for us, it's a different color as well. This happens to be for our 172, 172R. So we're about to do our, uh, completed our daily inspection as per the uh, policy operating handbook. Uh, and now we're gonna go and have a look and make, finally make sure we can sign this and it's legal to sign for us, both be across mechanically uh, and visually being inspected, but also legally. So it's a 172, it's the right uh, the call sign. This particular uh, maintenance release expires 7th the 5th, 21, or at 9783.8 hours, whichever comes first. It was done by Chubbuck and Smart. The, unfortunately, the stamps uh, has some um, smudge, but Chubbuck and Smart Engineers at Kingaroy. It's signed by uh, the man himself, Gary Chubbuck, with his license authority number. Uh, it's 100 hourly, was done at 96.83, therefore 100 hours later it expires. It's for night VFR, the box is ticked here for night VFR, and it's for area work for training. A few things to do coming up during our, uh, during, um, it's between the, you know, now and the next 100 hours. So there's an oil and oil filter. Um, there's a CO 1.100 series um, checked, which is a transponder test that gets done here on the airfield. On the other side, uh, it's a fairly fresh maintenance release, this one. So it was done on the 7th of the 5th. Uh, it's been signed off for today. So it's flown today. 
uh, by myself. I've signed it with my ARN number this time, not my membership number for the RAO. So this, now, this time it's my, uh, my pilot's license for, with CASA, my Part 61 license. Uh, it's done a bit of flying today, not only with me, but with other pilots, and it's done a total of 3.4 in the air switch, which gets added to the total time from yesterday. So 9706.2 goes to 9709.6. And it's done about 10 landings today. So I've added the landings up and it didn't take any oil. So it's also a pretty good engine too. It's done quite a lot of flying uh, and from its 100 hours, it hasn't needed to have a quart of oil yet. They're the forms. I often see a lot of people come in and they uh, will, will actually sign the form in the office and I ask them how they know it's airworthy when they haven't even seen the aeroplane yet. All right, so in summary, reading bits and pieces from the CAP 43 version uh, version 2. So the, the part 3 of the match release, the bit that we sign with all the hours, is to certify for that daily inspection. Don't be in the flying school in the air con doing your hair and everything, or it's left of mine, uh, and sign the match release before you actually go out and see if the aeroplane's got a wing and a tail, two wings and a tail. Uh, it's for recording of the daily, the, the, uh, the daily total flying time at the end of each day. It's for recording also the oil uplifts we showed you uh, and the landings. Also, it could be pressurisation, it could be engine cycles for a turbine engine, uh, aerobatic factored hours for uh, some aerobatic aeroplanes will have a shorter spar life if for every aerobatic uh, and a shorter engine life for every aerobatic hour. And it could be also for um, aerial, aerial agricultural um, factored hours, which may have a, a higher rate of uh, wear and tear on the airframe. The uh, daily inspection as per CASA Schedule 5 specifies that a daily inspection is required to be carried out that day um, the aircraft is to be flown and the person carrying out the daily inspection is required to sign for uh, its completion prior to the first flight of the day. So that's you as the pilot in command that's endorsed on the aeroplane, usually it's your instructor until you get a license, or a LAMI, a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer, or in our case with our RLs, our aeroplanes as well, the, uh, the level two maintainer or higher. Flight time, um, for us, um, uh, it says you can use a wristwatch if it's a Tiger Moth with no instrumentation, but for us, our aeroplanes will have a taco or they'll have an air switch timer in the aircraft. Bear in mind, um, during the uh, 100 hourly maintenance period or that whole, that year, there could be things that, that fall due during that year or during that 100 hours of flight. Um, one of them is quite often is the 100.5 and we actually looked at the fact that our Cessna needed its transponder check um, uh, conducted and it's a, it's a two yearly thing in accordance with CAO 100.5 and you can look that up and see what's due on those things. Um, it's important with the part one of the maintenance release not only is it, been, is it the right aeroplane, it's when it was issued, when it expires etc but also what box has been ticked for flight um, whether it's VFR, night VFR or even IFR and for us it's obviously for the RLs aeroplanes it's, it's within the RLs uh, syllabus still day VFR. Defects, um, generally these smaller aeroplanes don't have a big uh, minimum equipment list you can apply to the maintenance release for the day's flying. An airliner will. Uh, you might be able to take off on an airliner with particular weather at particular weights with a whole lot of unserviceabilities on the airframe. Uh, it doesn't make it any less safe, but it, it can have degradation on performance slightly, which may mean you take off at a lower weight or it can't be raining or the weather needs to be good or, or whatever the, the reasons are. Generally, with our lighty, uh, our light, you know, our sub 5700 kilo airplanes, there's not a lot that can't not be operating. Pretty easy to ground the airplane, so most of all our things we need needs to be operational. If the aircraft may have a small uh, minimum equipment list, uh, and it may have something like fire extinguisher, it may not be part of the MEL, so you may be able to go and fly that day without the fire extinguisher. So it might be an added bonus that you have. So that being said, I wanted to keep it fairly simple. Um, the reason why I made this little video is because uh, a lot of people are getting their licenses through us, be it an RPC or an RPL, PPL, CPL, particularly the RPCs and the RPLs, the first couple of licenses. It's a big jump from now uh, not being under your instructor's wing anymore, and now you're out there by yourself, you're signing, you're doing a daily inspection on the aeroplane, you're signing the maintenance release for the aeroplane, or the, or the maintenance form in, in our RL sense, uh, to fly for the day. So it's important that you have a bit of an idea on what the legal document is. Uh, it's a bit of a, a health, um, it's a real health check for the aeroplane for that day's flying. Um, gives us pretty good warning on anything operationally coming up without actually having the aircraft's flight, um, maintenance manuals, which could be 
you know, kilos of, uh, of literature, which can't travel on the airplane with us anyway. So keep researching, keep studying, keep asking questions. Uh, like I said, if you want to know more, read the CAP, CAP 43-01, um, uh, that, that CASA have written for maintenance releases. Um, a lot of it applies to RAOs, maintenance form. You can also get on the RAOs website uh, and look up uh, the technical aspect of their operations and the flying aspects as well. So there's a lot of forms, there's a lot of literature, a lot of uh, educational uh, literature on there. So don't just expect or rely on your instructor telling you everything. Um, try and make a little bit of an effort to do some, some background research so you've got an idea what your obligations are as a pilot, uh, as pilot in command, whether it's a 300 kilo Eurofox or a, or a, uh, a 30, 30 ton airliner. All the best and um, don't make any mistakes with your paperwork. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>